Welcome to the Risk Forever channel guys. The channel which shares the most relevant tips and tricks on how to win at risk, and improve your rank in no time. Subscribe to the channel and you won't even see how fast you will become so much better at risk. Push that notification bell to see new videos first. This is your host champion ever. And in this video I'm playing another 4 player fixed card game which is being played with public randoms. Settings, Alliance is on. Balance Blitz dice rolls in 60 seconds per turn. And in this game I will either go for Africa or Europe. I will just see which continent it will be easier to capture and for which continents my other opponents will go for. The purple player will obviously go for Australia, then for the blue player it makes the most sense to go for South America. So I'm just not sure what are the white player's plans yet, he added his troops to Europe while fortifying an army of other troops to North America. So no idea, it could be any of those continents, and also South America is a possibility for him to go as well with the blue player not fortifying his troops to South America. With the white player bringing some troops to North America, that would be really impossible for the blue player to get it anytime soon, or even at all depending on the circumstances, so the best decision for the blue player would be to capture South America and only then expand to North America in case he wants to capture it as well. But for now South America is really the greatest choice for him. As you can see the purple player is the most lucky player over here, he got fortunate to capture Australia in his second turn. So at least for now he will be the strongest player who has the biggest advantage until some other players get continents as well. And with the blue player getting a continent soon as well, I'm not planning to be far behind because I'm about to fully capture a continent too. As if everything goes right, I should be able to successfully hold Africa. The purple player is my ally from the beginning of the game so he was very nice to move out his troops from Africa so I would be able to capture it without any of us unnecessary wasting troops. Then when it comes to the blue player who has just captured South America, he hasn't accepted my alliance request but on the other hand hasn't declined it either, so I'm not sure how confident I could feel of him letting me hold Africa, but I mean I'm not going to overguard against him so he wouldn't feel threatened by me. With him adding some troops in North America in his first turn, I predict that he might want to go for it, and if so, then I should be good with the blue player with him being a struggle for the white player who is the most unlucky of us all to not get any continent yet. Meaning that he will have the highest chances of getting eliminated first as long as there are no conflicts among me, blue, and purple. Being a neighboring player with the blue player it could be important for me to have the alliance with him just to make sure that he wouldn't invade me, but on the other hand if he doesn't start putting a lot of troops next to my border being completely fine of me holding Africa, then the alliance is not necessary at all, as in one way or another way I wouldn't get invaded, and all I wanted from a possible alliance with a blue player is that he wouldn't invade me into Africa. And I mean it could be risky for the blue player to mess up with me with the white player having a big army in North America which any time could possibly be used on him. So unless if of course he makes the alliance with the white player. So what I mean that at the best case scenario the blue player could only afford being enemies with only one of us, as in case he decides to target both of us at the same time, then with the united forces we could team up and crush the blue player easily. But of course if the blue player is not going to be a struggle for me, then I would prefer that no player would get a big continent, so I will just simply let the blue player target white instead of trying to team up with white on blue. And I mean the blue player is not forced to be enemies with anyone if he doesn't want, for example he could just use the South American turtle strategy of building one big army on the territory of Peru inside South America while not guarding his borders at all assuming he would make the alliance with both of us, and then just simply using his Asian army to capture territories in order to get a card at the end of the turn. Anyways, I saw that the purple player wants to move out his troops from North America, however I didn't know whether he just wants to move them out going through Europe, or did he actually plan of going for it. But in any case before he would clearly show me that he wants to go for Europe, I decided starting adding some armies in Europe by myself. And I guess my plan has worked out. The purple player has moved out all of his troops from Europe without even putting any troops near, 
so I assume he is fine of me going for it. Especially when it looks that he is going for Asia by himself, so we should be able to have a mutually beneficial alliance in which we would be targeting our opponents in the way that it would be equally worth for us while letting each other hold big continents. Well, actually I have no idea if the purple player would be willing to start weakening our opponents, it's possible that after capturing Asia he will just become a turtling player, just gaining a lot of troops and not using them to attack someone. But it's also possible that the purple player could possibly take my alliance too seriously with me showing the initiative to attack our opponents, the purple player could end up over attacking someone without really realizing it, so then the game would be given away from me. Anyways, the good news is that the blue player has accepted my alliance request, meaning that I should be able to hold Africa and Europe for sure as long as the blue player is serious about the alliance. If the blue player hadn't accepted my alliance request, then probably I wouldn't have been that much confident of capturing Europe. But probably with the purple player expanding to Asia, I would have still tried, so I would have been balancing purple out instead of having to invade him if not being able to hold Europe. The purple player wants me to attack blue, but honestly it would be really self-destructive decision for me with the blue player retaliating and with the purple player still holding Asia. So I cannot really attack the blue player, so unless the purple player shows a lot of initiative by himself firstly. So what I did is suggested the purple player to attack white, because I would be willing to attack the white player also, and then after dealing with the white player I would be willing to attack the blue player also assuming the purple player doesn't take the advantage over me the troop wise. As obviously the balance of the game is more important than the alliances, I wouldn't like to end up giving away the game for my ally just to end up being in the second or even third place. So anyways, with the white player putting his biggest army on my border, in one way or another it made the most sense for me to target him anyways. Well, I assume the reason for the white player to put his army on Greenland was to stop me from capturing territories, so without having a territory to attack in order to get a card, I would invade purple into unguarded Asia, but I mean I want to take the alliance with the purple player seriously so we would be both having the advantage and highest chances to win. The purple player has some other plans though. And whether it was a good or a bad decision to betray me it's unknown yet, but we are going to find it out soon. I mean the white and blue players are obviously not satisfied with each other, plus additionally the white player fortified his biggest army on my border. So assuming they wouldn't be targeting him, then it might be a good decision. But, alright. The blue player has invaded purple and that's really appreciated, the blue player is my new best ally now. But in any case, even if the blue player hadn't invaded purple, then I would have invaded the purple player by myself. So in regards of betraying me when not being able to properly guard the borders against me, it was quite a bad decision for the purple player to betray me. With him seeing that I adding my troops to the border against the white player while not strengthening the borders against purple, the purple player could have at least waited for one more turn and invade me after trading in a set. And come on purple I thought you wanted to be an ally with me once again. After the purple player betrayed me, I broke the alliance with him. But the purple player then almost immediately offered me to be allies with him once again. What I am not going to lie looked really laughable for me, it seemed like that the purple player wanted to potentially take the advantage over me thinking that I will be really naive. So obviously I wasn't eager to accept it, but with the purple player being invaded by blue, I thought whatever, let's accept it and see how the things go. But as you saw the things go wrong for me with the purple player once again. He invaded me into Africa crushing a bunch of troops, and then putting a lot of troops next to me in Europe. So I see that I cannot trust the purple player at all. So I'm done with the purple player. I decided to take Australia from him so I would be guaranteed to hold the continent, and also the least thing for me was needed that I would end up being quite weaker than the purple player with him constantly weakening me. So I wouldn't be surprised if he had some plans to take me out soon. Also I captured Africa not because I'm hoping to hold it, but because the purple player would invade me into it rather than considering to suicide on me by possibly crushing my Australian army. But oh no, the purple player is really unpredictable. And also it seems he really wants to eliminate me from the game, 
he doesn't even hesitate to highly weaken himself. Even though he could be easily taken out if someone helps me out. So hopefully the blue player will be the one, I sent him the attack request to attack purple. But yeah, unfortunately I was left to the will of faith. Anyways, what do you think about the purple player's alliance request guys? I should accept it, right? The purple player is definitely not going to take me out with him getting so many troops next turn. I'm talking sarcastically of course. As the purple player really left me with no choice, with me having a 10 troop set at 3 cards it's my last chance to prevent myself from losing the game by trying to take the purple player out, as otherwise he would just crush all the troops he gets into me, so that's not something to risk with him having 4 cards and trading in a set. In any case I would say that it would be better to get taken out by blue rather than getting suicided on by purple. So even if the blue player takes me out right now, then at least I will know that I tried my best. Thank god I successfully made it to take the purple player out. I wouldn't have taken him out if he hadn't put me into a position in which only one of us stays alive, so the purple player could have been more reasonable with his attacks. Anyways, what I know is that the blue player didn't invade purple into his continents last turn with him being barely alive, so maybe the blue player won't invade me focusing on the white player once again. But alright, the blue player invades me. For some reasons he isn't as a good ally as he was before. So let's send the alliance request to the white player. But yeah, it would have been dumb to let me hold all of that stuff, so the blue player made the right decision. However for the white player it was a bad idea to crush the blue player's army, even though I really like it. As he not only highly weakened himself but also totally gave away me the game with me having a 10 troop set plus getting additional 10 troops as my territorial with Australia bonus. So that gave a perfect opportunity to take the blue player out for his 5 cards and guarantee for myself to win the whole game. But what an unexpected end guys. I had no idea that after taking the purple player out I will suddenly win. I'm wondering what rank opponents I played with. Let's check it out. Alright, the purple and white players were both experts, and the blue player was an intermediate. 